Northcraft Analytics YouTube channel. Today it's Lee Cullen, co-founder of Northcraft, and Paul Summerfield, Chief Technology Officer. Going to give a brief overview today of our metric of the month for service level management, which is percentage of service targets breached. And I'd like to also point you to the website for a couple new resources that might be helpful for you. Our new transparent pricing model uh, and knowledge base, pretty helpful for understanding how to build uh, reports in Northcraft, you know, on the knowledge base, you know, in Tableau and Power BI with us versus a traditional do-it-yourself approach. And uh, in the pricing, just kind of highlighting the fact that they're very limited and, uh, and in some cases no services whatsoever required for the software, um, both for on-premise and SaaS. So have a look at those and I, I hope they provide value for you. All right, on with today's topic. So we're covering SLM today because uh, we've seen an issue repeatedly over the years with multiple customers in the Global 2000, and it's solvable. It is really one of those problems that's solvable with technology. And if you've been in IT for a long time and follow the process, or the mantra, excuse me, process, 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 you know, you're generally right. Um, it, it is more important. However, we also know that there are truly disruptive technologies that unlock ex exponentially more efficient processes or remove unnecessary procedures permanently or altogether. So uh, what's this issue we're talking about? Well, uh, because of the complexities and organizational support needed across multiple departments in a large organization to generate a truly accurate service model, and I mean the traditional technical service, business service type, right? Uh, many customers end up with very simple priority-based OLAs for all incidents, you know, they're generic. But as you know, a desktop support incident is vastly different than an enterprise application or network infrastructure incident. So the solution is to get broader organizational involvement so that you can implement uh, that service model, but it requires analytics to build a business case. Why is that? Well, the sheer volume of data grows exponentially when you factor in, let's say, an average of two service target records uh, for response and resolution time, let's just say, for every incident record. And then what happens when you bring in request management, right, and change management and problem and configuration management, which are all supported uh, by the SLM process, working together with the SLM process. So the data volume becomes astronomical and uh, you know, it becomes hard to add the clarity you need to prioritize those scarce organizational resources to the most critical incidents or, you know, changes, problems, requests, etc. in your organization. So and it, it really is our opinion that scarce IT resources will be a long-term issue. So we think it's a problem worth solving. Uh, so a key part of service level management is to be able to report and monitor the service levels that are associated with your operational level agreements, which in our experience is a challenge for a large number of organizations. Uh, coupled with the fact that Lee mentioned earlier with respect to adding granularity of the technical service to the OLA, we now need to bring in, bring in data from many different tables, which will take an entirely different approach than using traditional query languages, say. Um, so, if you can't effectively measure your achieved service levels against your targeted process areas, then you will obviously struggle to demonstrate to your customers and stakeholders that you're improving their service quality. Um, next and possibly most importantly, we need uh, an intermediary step between simple priority-based OLAs and in-state business service SLAs that allows us to make significant progress in efficiency well, without having to boil the ocean of business service SLAs, which are typically the desired end state. This is the middle step towards service nirvana that will gain you credibility to move to the next level of proving the need for going beyond the productivity benefits of technical service-based OLAs and the intermediary step. So today we're going to show you uh, how someone with even uh, poor ITSM data like you can quickly build out an example report focused on the monitoring of service level management with a precursor to technical services so that you can see how to baseline a large amount of data with your ServiceNow subcategories, CI classes, uh, application names or whatever works with your data across uh, an unlimited time period for truly effective statistical analysis and performance measurement 
that will enable you to uh, guide your team towards more effective and targeted OLAs today and SLAs eventually. Okay, so we'll kick off with uh, some filters, um, uh, plug those in, uh, look at some sources, um, email, phone, uh, relative date filtering, etc. So Lee's going to plug that in to kick us off. Yes, the slicers are really handy um, for a number of different things, but keep in mind to use the slicer filter when you want to bring in those relative dates. And we'll use open date from ServiceNow. Um, and yeah, I'll use year uh, just because of the uh, how old this uh, data set is. So uh, drop down menu, click relative. Simple as that. And uh, we'll do last five years. The product's been around a long while now. Um, actually, 2011 was the original release date of the ServiceNow BI application. Okay, so we've got our relative date filter there, and uh, that'll get us started. Plug in a, um, uh, start with the SLAs that are defined within your ServiceNow implementation, maybe. Uh, we'll build a matrix widget in to display the percentage of targets met, targets missed, the actual targets applied, and how many uh, have breached said SLAs, maybe. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, and so this is where we get multi-dimensional, right? We're going right. to different places. Um, you know, uh, we need to get the SLA name. Well, that's not in the incident table, so we'll grab that as a starting point, and then... Um, couple of our common measures, like uh, percentage of targets met and missed. This will be great for that, um, you know, the new uh, configurable conditional formatting that yeah, we love yeah. so much. And then we'll uh, add some counts, right, so we can see the volume, but also for governance. So right. we're looking at service targets applied and breached. We want counts there. Um, and we can also see where, you know, if you drill down and a service target hasn't been applied, you know, then, um, you know, that helps you with your governance process. Right, identify those gaps, yeah. Um, I'm going to go with uh, alternating rows for our style. Yeah, it's our yeah. personal favorite. really makes it pop. You can change the uh, fonts and such as well if you'd like. Um, and then let's do our conditional formatting here. Over on the formatting controls, conditional formatting has been there. It's been static and tied to a report. And uh, but So we want basically green for certain thresholds for met and red for met. So we'll do a percentage of uh, service targets met first. Turn on our data bars. Click on advanced controls. And we don't want to highlight uh, in green where we're at you know 41% effectiveness and likely really not even at uh, 79%, but we'll just create a threshold there. Since it's a percentage, we use 0 0.5, so that's 50%. So you're above 50%, you're green, and then we're gonna flip over to our uh, percentage of targets missed. Turn on data bars. Now, we don't want that green because those are missed, right? So uh, we'll make this a minimum number of, heck, also, Maybe 0.5, make that red. Not really important, you know. It just um, that it does uh, pop in red there. There we go. Yeah, okay. Pink. Yeah. No, or pink, yeah. right? Whatever uh, works. Whatever works for you. Um, <laughs> what about uh, and that, that looks like it's the wrong way around, Lee, right? So we, we're immediately seeing some data here that, that looks like we're focused on the P4s. Um, that we've got uh, a huge amount of attention to the uh, the majority of our incidents at mm. uh, the lower level of our priority scale. Right, so that's definitely something we want to dig into. A yeah. couple ways to do that easily. Let's use these KPI widgets. They work really well with the Northcraft solutions, which are built on SSAS because they have built-in KPIs. We just need to make sure we put in a, a time period there again for the uh, trend access. Because this is showing you your actual data in um, this KPI widget, which you know, a lot of people love that. Yeah, I like the instant view of. Mm -hmm. of you know, something that pops at you um, uh, gives you an instant uh, read on the percentage. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what about another easy to read visual um, with a card widget uh, that will show us uh, maybe um, how many serv service targets have been applied in total for each SLA? Hey, it looks like I get ahead of you a little bit there, Paul. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, well, then we want to count, right? Yeah. So, when we get you know the ability to drill down then we can see specifically where targets you know to changes or problems or incidents or requests 
have been applied, haven't mm-hmm. been applied, mm-hmm. etc. All right, and um, now we're gonna get a bit funky. Donut mm-hmm. for all the cops out there. Right. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's bring in a donut widget. This gives us a cool view of our service level targets breached by car- category, uh, and it's interactive, which is what I love. Right, and we're gonna use. We've just honestly done so many tree maps that we thought we'd bring in a different visualization. Yeah. Probably need to explore those in detail on. Um, you know, a separate video with all the visualizations and Power BI Studio and ways to take advantage of those for IT data. But we'll do uh, the breaches by category, but I mean, what do you think? I mean, you could use really anything, right, Paul? Yeah, Um, I think, um, yeah, category is good because it allows you to hover over what should do, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and this allows you to apply technical services as well. Um, So, uh, let's see, oh, I want to use, Let's refresh that. Sometimes that can uh, just fix these. You, you'll see these uh, a, a decent amount. Just these uh, uh, visuals can't be displayed. This will happen from time to time, where you might have a um, you know even a, a, a you know Power BI issue, or you know you lose kind okay, of issues. Issue, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, so uh, why don't we bring in something like a donut with you that provides us a cool view of our service targets breached by category. So. That works. It's simple, and uh, we've done so many tree maps. I think in previous videos, I'm, I'm hearing complaints in uh, from the audience. <laughs> um, as always, you know, I just like to emphasize the issue of make sure you're always in the chart area when you uh, create your visualization. That's uh, such a common mistake, uh, and I just did it there. We all do. Um, but there we go. There's our uh, donut chart. And now we've got the ability to apply technical services, uh, you know, start to introduce that concept. Probably the deeper you go into the data or, you know, and in subcategory application or CI, CI names, things like that, you can, um, you know, even bring in more information with respect to the SLAs. Mm-hmm. Yes. So now these are distributed sy- systems SLAs, actual performance, uh, business en- applications, such you know enterprise applications versus desktop, right? And when you get to desktop, you'll see you know fewer criticals, right, and a higher percent and higher percentages met, um, which kind of emphasizes the point we were talking a little bit earlier. Yeah. I think it's probably here throwing out my colleagues. Um, show us. Uh, as much as I love those colors, you know, uh, show us something that's colorblind friendly. Oh, this is great. And uh, yeah, so I'll make sure I choose the whole report area. Uh, switch themes, they now have some default themes for you. So make those colorblind safe. Turns out we had already done that in a previous take, which is no big deal at all, really. But you see where to click and we'll just show you how to um, apply that. Really simple to switch theme. It just applies it immediately. Uh, anything else, Paul, that you like? Um, what about plugging in the table? Uh, the, it might be a lot of data there, but uh, you know, give us a, a lower level of detail by the incidents themselves. So you know, one of our signature moves is obviously we can drill down into millions of records. You know, it's, exactly. Well, you never get trust in the data if you don't give the ability right. to drill down, and I think that is critical. So you even and especially on large data sets, because. It's it becomes less possible with you know existing technologies. You know, if, if uh, you're using SQL or, you know, DAX and, you know, you're doing this yourself, right. it doesn't scale it and it does not perform even if you can get the data loaded, you know, um, for the types of things that you need. So, you know, we'll just put in a few fields here to kind of highlight the uh, capability, you know, uh, yeah, it's yeah. mistake. Right? I, I, we're just doing this for illustrated purposes. Right. I mean, this may not be something you want yeah. here. A dashboard for, exactly. for your senior management, uh, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, gives you an idea of uh, what you can do to utilize a report that uh, for service level managers or incident management process teams, right. if you've got that organizational construct, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it can easily be moved into a dashboard that could be displayed in a, a common area or by a service level manager to right. more transparently demonstrate the serious commitment of a mm-hmm. of organization to improve service levels. Right? Yes. So, you know, one thing we talked about, I guess, really the last thing is, you know, I want to look at those service targets applied and breached at a granular level. 
okay, and make sure that we have coverage. Because so if you ever see a zero, no, no service target applied, why is that? Dig into it, add additional fields like subcategory or application, and figure out where you have the gaps in your current OLA process, which are moving more into, you know, towards the technical service concept first, and then ultimately that end state of business services so that you can have really meaningful SLAs that are prior, prioritized around the critical pieces of infrastructure and applications that really, you know, drive revenue, um, you know, productivity and reduce costs the most. Um, yeah. I mean, that's a great point because I hear people say a lot, you know, oh, I don't know if my SLA is defined enough, or I don't know if my data is clean enough. Well, I, I always found that if you, you know, you expose these gaps, you know what to go after from a priority set. Um, you know whether they are a, that's a big gap or a small gap, um, and you can have discussions based on the data. Whereas when you're not showing it this transparently, it's it's often um, uh, a little bit more hidden than you would want, and you, you're not exposed to the le level that uh, actually shines a, a light on it. Yeah, that's, that's excellent. I appreciate that, Paul. Good point. And I think just to end it up, don't forget to uh, you know check out the website, the knowledge base, the transparent pricing, and as always, the Microsoft App Source. If you'd like to test drive some of our freebies, uh, like the change management dashboard, um, great ways to interact with us. And we're always happy to give, obviously, a demonstration uh, when you contact us through our website. So we thank you very much for your time today and let us know if you have any questions and feel free to comment.